Now while you're working and blocking out your head, you may feel it feels a little bit weird, especially if you're trying to match some reference. Because you can see that this doesn't really have perspective turned on. Now generally while I'm working, I don't really have perspective usually turned on, certainly when I'm doing hard surface stuff. But if you want, you can go over here and you can actually turn on this perspective button. Hotkey for that is P, so you can turn that on and off. So you can go ahead and turn perspective turned on. And in fact, if you go over here to the draw menu, you're going to have some more options. So ZBrush has a universal perspective camera that has focal length, field of view, etc. If you turn that off, that goes into ZBrush legacy mode. And that'll actually ungray this angle of view up here and align to object and stuff like that. Generally, we just leave the universal on if you want to, especially if you're matching reference that's like, hey, we shot this with a 35 millimeter camera. You can go ahead and choose 35 or 50 or 28 or 24 or 18, or just dial in your focal length there. Uh, but generally, I'll just leave this at 50, sculpt in perspective mode, or just turn perspective off and continue working. Now, while we've been working, we've also been, you know, tapping S to go to this draw size. We've been going up here and then changing our Z intensity. If you tap the space bar, and you got to hold it down, you'll also have access to all sorts of things. You've got color over here, you've got stroke options, what material you're using. Here's draw size focal shift, which we'll get to in a bit. RGB intensity, Z intensity, Z add and Z sub, all sorts of things in here you can use. So if you want to use this as an alternative to tapping S for draw size or going somewhere else in your interface, again, just remember you can hold down space bar and access all of these options. We'll also get to making your own custom menu and assigning a hotkey to that for your own like custom marking menu system. But that's a really easy built-in one to ZBrush. So now up to this point, you can navigate around, you can use DynaMesh, you can use basic sculpting brushes. So feel free to go through here. You can go through and start blocking out shapes. You've got hotkeys now, so you can very quickly go through and start defining volumes, putting in details, And you can also make variants. One way you can do this, you can go up here, you can hit clone, and that'll go ahead and clone off a copy. So you can always go back to this tool and then start modifying this tool. Again, using all the brushes you have available to you, you can use your pinch brush. Or one thing I forgot to mention is your inflate brush. Let's go into our brush menu here. And hold on, control alt, assign inflate to alt I. I use it enough to Need a hotkey for that. And now you can see we have two variations of this face. We haven't got really gotten the subtools yet, but an alternative to this is you can go through here to your subtool menu. You can hit duplicate, and now you've got two separate subtools. Right now they're going to be drawing over each other. So if I go through here, for example, and use the move brush, there's going to be one object right on top of each other. We can go through here, we can turn off the eyeball for one of these. And now we can use this as a way to go through and do variants as well as subtools. Now if you didn't if I didn't make this clear enough when we were talking about file handling, if I was to go up here now and do a tool save as, it would save this selected Z tool, which has two subtools in it. So it would save both of these here. And if I go down here to the solo menu, we can turn this one on. Let me just turn this eyeball back on. So now I can kind of switch between these two. And let's make this one even more. There we go. So now you got two very different ones. But you can still save these as one Z tool, and it'll have all of these subtools along with it. And because we have solo mode turned on, we can switch between these heads, work on one, select another one, work on the other. Maybe go through here and give him a little cauliflower ear. But again, have fun with this. Get used to the navigation and hotkeys and the basic sculpting in ZBrush. And like I said, make some variants and first and foremost, have fun.